Greetings, friends and brethren around the world. One of the most interesting topic indeed for all of us is about eternal judgment. Eternal judgment and actually what does God has to say in his word about that? You see, one of the most astounding truths revealed in the Bible is that God is not trying to save all the world now. And yet, conversely, another one of the most encouraging and positive Bible truths is that all humankind shall have a chance for salvation. Now, how can both these teachings be true? If God is not trying to save the world now, how can all humanity have a chance for salvation? Well, the answer to the seeming dilemma is in the Bible doctrine of eternal judgment. What about all the billions of people who lived from Adam until now, who never knew of the name of Jesus Christ, the only name under heaven by which people can be saved, as the apostles pointed out in Acts chapter 4 verse 12? Are those people lost forever, doomed to die with no hope for eternal life? Well, what about the idolaters and heathen throughout history? And what about even much-loved members of your own family, now deceased without knowing Jesus Christ perhaps, or alive but not really being religiously minded? What about all of those people? What about all of them? So yes, what about them? But before we proceed uh, with explanation... Let's read that section from Acts chapter 4. Let's start in verse 8, when Peter and John were taken uh, before the Pharisees and rulers of the elders of Israel. And they were kind of beaten and they were threatened not to preach the name of Jesus Christ anymore. This is what they said, verse 8. Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers of the people and elders of Israel, if this day are judged for a good deed done to a helpless man, by what means he has been made well, let it be known to you and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, by him this man stands here before you whole. This is the stone which was rejected by, the, by you builders, which has become the chief cornerstone. And verse 12 now is the key verse, Nor is there salvation in any other, for there is no other name under heaven given among the men by which we must be saved. Yes, indeed. You need to know, dear friends, and you need to be able to explain how you know what good things are in store for all these people. This information will help you to explain the doctrine of eternal judgment. The doctrine of eternal judgment, one of the most important doctrines revealed to us by God Almighty in the Bible. Now, the judgment period for a person is the time of his or her calling until death or change into a spirit-composed member of God's family. It is during this time that a person's life is continually being judged against the biblical standards of righteousness. For different groups of people, this judgment will occur at different times either now, as in the case of God's church, or during the millennium, or after the millennium in the great white throne judgment. Now, this is very important for all of us to understand, brethren, in the church, and perhaps there will be some others who might be interested. It is very important to understand uh, what does it mean, the millennium, what is the uh, judgment period in the great white throne judgment, and it is important for us to understand what are the usual teachings of this world. The teachings of the churches of this world are far afield, far away from the clear revelation of the Bible. Most churches do not even understand that all people are not being called to salvation now, let alone understand the connection between the time of one's calling and his period of judgment. The churches usually view the judgment merely as the time of passing of a sentence upon a person. Many people probably picture a courtroom complete with a fatherly but somewhat stern God in a black robe behind a large desk faced by fearful, once living sinners waiting to see if they will go up or down. But such a picture is no, in no way that presented by the Bible. Such a picture is non-existent in the Bible. What is the Bible teaching? The astounding central truth essential to understanding this topic is that God is not trying to save all the world now. Satan is said to be deceiving the whole world, Revelation 12 and verse 9. If the whole world is deceived, how can it be in the process of being saved? 
No, there is no in the process of being safe. So it is one, just one of those many uh, illogical statements, many illogical beliefs of the churchianity today. Before we proceed, let's read Revelation 12, 9. Revelation 12 and verse 9 says very clearly, So the great dragon was cast out, that serpent of old, called the devil and Satan, who deceives the whole world. He was cast to the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. So, uh, from, you see, the days of Adam and his eviction from the Garden of Eden, through the days when Moses told the children of Israel that, this is quoted from Deuteronomy 29, verse 12, verse 2 to 4, that the Lord has not given you a heart to perceive and eyes to see and ears to hear. So since the days of Adam, through the days when Moses told these Israelites, it has been obvious that God is not now saving the whole world. The Apostle Paul says in Romans chapter 11, verse 32, God has concluded them, all, meaning all humanity, all humankind, he has concluded them all in unbelief, that he might eventually, but not now, that he might have mercy upon all. This is Romans chapter 11, verse 32, authorized version. So no wonder Satan is called the God of this world in Second Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4, and God's way is called the way only few now take. Only few find the way. That's revealed to us in Matthew chapter 7 and verse 14. Matthew 7 and verse 14. He says, Because narrow is the gate, and difficult is the way which leads to life, and there are few who, at this time, there are few who find it. There are just few who find it at this time, dear brethren. So this is not the day of salvation for the whole world. So no wonder Satan is called the God of this world, and God's way is called the only way only few now take. And no wonder the Apostle Paul called the vast majority of humanity, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 11 and 12, strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But why? Why has God chosen not to save all people now? Well, the answer simply is that for God to fulfill his master plan of building righteous, holy character in humans, and then to put those humans into his powerful universe ruling family, he must first allow humans to learn that they need God. People will learn that, that crime against God's law doesn't pay, that life without God leads to war, misery, unhappiness, and destruction, exactly the things that we have been seeing these days in our world. And therefore most, but not all, of humanity are being left to themselves now. Now some are being called by God now to preach his message as a witness to the world, not to proselyte or convert the world, but to preach for a witness, Matthew 24, 14, which says, and this gospel of the king will be preached to all the world for a witness, and then the end will come. So some are being called to preach that gospel, and some are being called to learn God's way, so they may teach the masses when God finally does call the rest of the human race and open their minds, as we can see in Revelation chapter 5 and in uh, verse 10. Revelation 5, 10. Let's pick it up in verse 9. And they sang a new song saying, You are worthy, you meaning the Lamb of God, Jesus Christ, you are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals, for you were slain and have redeemed us to God by your blood out of every tribe and tongue and people and nation. And, verse 10, And have made us kings and priests to our God, and we shall reign on earth. Which means, you see, we will be reigning on earth, with what purpose? Well, obvious, with the purpose that, you know, we will teach the masses when God finally does call the rest of the human race and open their minds to salvation. Now, two key verse scriptures in this regard are Second Corinthians chapter 6, verse 2, and verse First Peter chapter 4 and verse 17. Second Corinthians 6, 2 is misleading in some translations, which read that God has succored us in the day of salvation. But this verse, both in the original Greek and in the Old Testament verse, 
from which it is quoted does not contain the definite article, but reads that now is a day of salvation. So obviously, if now is a day of salvation, then there must be other times when God has dealt or will deal with people. As far as, uh, as far as first Peter chapter four verse seventeen is concerned, well, that verse makes the point that now is only a time of salvation more clear, showing for whom now is the time for salvation. It says, for the time has come for judgment to begin at the house of God. Notice, brethren, that a judgment is now on the house of God, which is the church of God, but not upon others. It is only upon the house of God. And clearly this Judgment is not a mere sentencing, but it is a process of evaluation made by God as he watches over our growth through a period of time. Now, of course, ultimately, judgment includes God's final decision about our spiritual state and even the reward if we qualify or the sentence to death if we don't. But to call eternal judgment merely the single moment of decision for God is mistaken and it is not part of the Bible. But if now is not the only time when God will call humanity, that is, subject humankind to spiritual judgment for their works, while they know God's law, then when are the other times? Excellent question. The other times are, again, as you can well understand, revealed in the Bible. The first period of judgment, when most will be deceived and only a few will be called, is now, as we read in First Peter chapter 4, verse 17. Now, this era ends with the return of Jesus Christ to set up his kingdom and the resurrection to eternal life of all who were called and qualified from Adam's time until then. As Revelation 20, verse 5 says, this is the first resurrection. So it is the time of redemption of the few called, as it says in Romans 8.28, who form the first fruits, so not the whole spiritual harvest, but the first fruits of God's master plan. And there is the first fruits are mentioned in James and also in Revelation. Let's go to James chapter 1 and verse 18 to see the first reference to the first fruits of salvation. James 1, 18, it says, Of his own will, he brought us forth by the word of truth, that we might be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. Now, let us go to Revelation 14, 14, which says, Then I looked, and behold, a white cloud, and on the cloud sat one, like the Son of Man, having on his head a golden crown and in his hand a sharp sickle. So, once again, dear friends and brethren, once again, uh, as Revelation 20 verse 5 says, this is the first resurrection, it is a time of redemption of the few who are called now in Romans 28, 28, and they, few who are called now, they form the first fruits so not the whole spiritual harvest, but only the first fruits of the spiritual harvest of God's master plan, as explained in James 1.18 and Revelation 14.14. 14. The second time of judgment is during the millennium, which is the 1,000 uh, 1, year after immediately, well, uh, 1,000 year that will ensue after Jesus' return. When he returns to set up his kingdom, then we'll have these 1,000 years of his reign on the earth with his saints who will be teaching uh, all those, you know, masses of people who are now, who are now having their way, the way of salvation open to them. Now, one clear theme running through the Bible is that during the millennium, all then alive will know the truth of God. Like we read in Isaiah 11 and 9, in Jeremiah 31, 34, and in Joel chapter 2 and verse 32. Well, let us now read all those three scriptures. Uh, Isaiah, 11 verse 9 says they shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountain for this the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea so that's the first scripture we read about 
the fact that the whole earth will be filled with the knowledge of God and that all those living in the millennium will have the salvation open to them and their minds will be open to understand. Jeremiah 31:34. No more shall every man teach his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for they all shall know me, from the least of them to the greatest of them, says the Lord, for I will forgive their iniquity and their sin I will remember no more. And now we read the third one, the third scripture is Joel chapter 2 and verse 32. It says, And it shall come to pass that whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. For in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem there shall be deliverance, as the Lord has said, among the remnant whom the Lord calls. So we see from these three scriptures indeed that we mention, during the millennium all then alive will know the truth of God. And this millennial period, period of judgment differs from the world now in that all people then alive will have a chance for salvation. But still, those who lived and died from Adam until Jesus Christ's return and the first resurrection will not yet have had the chance. They will not yet have, they will not yet not yet have had a chance either nor the chance anyway so let me make it clear once again so still those who lived and died from Adam until Jesus Christ's return and the first resurrection will not yet have had a chance their chance will come however when will it come well it will come after those 1000 years it is spoken of in Revelation 20 verse 11 and that verse describes the great white throne judgment this is the time of the second resurrection when the dead from all time, small and great, will be raised to another physical existence except this time with a difference. There is a difference. But before we read and see the difference, first let's go to Revelation 20 and let's read verse 11. Revelation 20 verse 11. Then, the Apostle John writes, Then I saw a great white throne and him who sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away. And there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, verse 12, standing before God, and books were opened. So that's the difference, you see. Books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life, and the dead were judged according to their works by the things which were written in the book. So, you see what is the difference? Uh, this time, the books, the Bible that is, the books, Biblos in, he, in Greek, so the books, the Bible, are open to their understanding, as we read in verse 12, and they live out a full lifespan with the chance to know God and the truth of salvation. Now this is the time when all the humans who have not had a chance will be given one. This is the time of judgment for Tyre and Sidon, Sodom and Gomorrah, as Jesus revealed to us in Matthew 11 and in Matthew 10. Let's see that revelation in Matthew 11 and 10. Matthew 11 and verse 22. But I say to you, it will be more tolerable for Tyre and Sidon or Sidon in the day of judgment than for you. And then he continues to speak about the judgment in the following verses. Uh, also in Matthew chapter 10, let's read verse 15. Matthew 10, 15. Assuredly, I say to you, it will be more tolerable for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah in the day of judgment than for that city, that city which experienced the live Jesus Christ who came and preached repentance to all of them but they refuse to listen to him. Now, it is spoken of in plain terms by the prophet Ezekiel as well, how those th that time will be. It is in Ezekiel chapter 37. So, keep in mind, so this is after the millennium, and this is the judgment before the great white throne, and we read about that in Ezekiel chapter 37. And here is verse 12. Which says, therefore prophesy and say to them, thus says the Lord God, 
Behold, O my people, I'll open your graves and cause you to come up from your graves and bring you into the land of Israel. Verse 14, I'll put my spirit in you and you shall live and I'll place you in your own land. Then you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken it and performed it, says the Lord. So, you see, very plain terms, after the millennium, there'll be uh, another period of judgment of all those who from Adam until the very return of Jesus Christ never were still in their graves and they did not have any chance for salvation, but their chance is coming up. Now you see, God's merciful fair plan will be complete. All will have had a chance for salvation, a period of living during which the truth of God will be open to their minds and they will be judged according to it. That's their judgment period. For the church, brethren, for the church, that period is now. In the millennium, all those then alive will have their chance. Finally, during the great white throne judgment, all the former dead who did not have a chance before will get their opportunity. No one will get a second chance, but will get one full opportunity for salvation. There is this wrong notion in many that the second resurrection and the uh, that the judgment before the great white throne judgment is a second chance. There is no second chance because they those people never had the first chance. Because God is not calling humanity to salvation at all. He's not going calling the whole humankind to salvation now. And from Adam until now, he is not calling the whole humanity. He called only a few. There is a narrow gate and a few find it. In the millennium after Christ's return, he will call everyone who survives the great tribulation and makes it into the millennium. After the millennium, when the earth is prepared for the second resurrection, billions of people who never really understood the truth and never really had any chance will have a chance. Satan is deceiving now the whole world. He is not allowing people to understand the truth of God and therefore the humanity as a whole is not called for salvation now. Now, there are key verses in all of this. Here are some main scriptures relating to eternal judgment. I'll just going to list them and you can make notes and you can check them later. Mark chapter 4 verses 11 and 12 and John chapter 6 verse 44. Those verses show that God is not trying to save all the world now. Then, 2 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 2 explains that now is not the only day of salvation. 1 Peter chapter 4 verse 17 shows that judgment is a process of time while one is under review by God and that judgment is now on the church. Revelation chapter 20 verse 1 through 12 describes the various resurrections that delineate the various judgment periods. Isaiah 11 and 9 and Jeremiah 31 34 say that all people will know God in the millennium. Ezekiel 37 verses 12, 13 and 14 that scripture illustrates how the former dead will be raised and given the truth of God during the great white throne judgment. In conclusion, brethren, of all the doctrines of the Bible, none show God's boundless fairness any more than the truth about judgment. All people everywhere will receive an equal chance at salvation and at a time in which their own chance of success will be great indeed. Truly, our loving God is not a respecter of persons, but fair to all humankind.